Welcome to our lecture online. We've seen in the previous videos that due to the effect of gravity, space curves and because of the curvature, we experience time dilation. The stronger the gravitational field, the, the stronger the effect of an object with a large mass in space, the slower time proceeds. So we have the, what we call time dilation because of the gravitational forces. And so you imagine that when you get very close to a black hole, the time dilation would be enormous. And it turns out that if we get right to the event horizon of a black hole, time will actually stop, stand still. Now, we can calculate the force due to gravity because we can assume a particular mass inside the black hole. We can assume a Schwarzschild radius. If the mass is equal to the mass of the sun inside the black hole, then the Schwarzschild radius would be 2,964 meters. So we can calculate the forces and the acceleration due to gravity at the event horizon in such a situation. Now, we also know that time is dilated when there's a simulated gravity. For example, if we put an object on a spinning wheel and we make the wheel spin really fast, we have what we call the centripetal forces, and therefore we have what we call centripetal acceleration. And the greater that centripetal acceleration, the greater the time dilation. We experience that when we put a clock on there, on a very fast spinning wheel, that time will actually slow down because there's what we call simulated gravity. Now, how do we know that it's due to the simulated gravity that time is slowing down and not because of the effects of moving really fast because it requires enormous velocity going around a circle and so we also know that there's time dilation as objects get closer to the speed of light. So how do we know that this is due to gravity and not because of the special theory of relativity because we're going really really fast. Well let's try to figure that out. So here what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the acceleration due to gravity. What is g equal to at the event horizon if we had a black hole with the mass equal to the mass of the sun and so the event horizon radius would be 2,964 meters. So what we can do is we can set mg equal to the force of gravity which is g m big M divided by r squared. So this would be the mass of an object at the event horizon. This is the mass inside the event horizon. This is the universal uh, constant of gravity. And r is, of course, the radius that we're dealing with here. You can see that the mass cancels out on both sides. And so we can see what the acceleration to the gravity is at the event horizon for such a black hole. So plugging in the numbers, we have g is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. The mass of the sun is 2 times 10 to the 30th, of course that would be in kilograms, divided by the radius that would be 2,964 meters, and we have to square that. And this would then be the acceleration due to gravity at the event horizon of such a black hole. So it ends up with 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 2 e to the 30th divided by 2,964 squared equals, so we end up with g equal to 1.52 times 10 to the 13th meters per second squared. All right, so what would be the orbital velocity at that point? So the orbital velocity would be, so now what we want to do is to say, well, the orbital velocity, how do we calculate that? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's see here. Ah, let's start with the centripetal acceleration. A centripetal is equal to V squared over R. And so in this case, the centripetal acceleration would be the same as the acceleration due to gravity. We're going to equate those two, the principle of equivalence. So we're going to write G is equal to V squared over R. Solving that for V, we get V squared is equal to G times R, or V is equal to the square root of g times r. In other words, this will tell us how fast an object at the edge of this, this disk spinning around really fast would be moving and how close it will be to the speed of light. So in this case, v is equal to the square root of g, which is 1.52 times 10 to the 13th. That would be meters per second square because it's acceleration. And we multiply the times the radius. Now we took the radius equal to one meter to make things simple for us, so times one meter 
So we end up with meters squared per second squared. We take the square root of that, and the velocity is equal to the square root of that, which is 3.9, 3.9, and let's get it in the, times 10 to the sixth. 3.9 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. Now that is quite fast. That is equal to 3,900 kilometers per second, which would be about 2,400 miles per second. In other words, a clock on the edge of that spinning disk would be moving at 2,400 miles every second. That's the distance between California and Florida, for example. That's a vast distance every single second. But how does that compare to the speed of light? So what we can do here is we can say a V over C is equal to, that would be 3.9 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. And the speed of light is 3.0 times 10 to the eight meters per second. And so the ratio of the velocity of the clock on a disk to the velocity of speed of light is about 0.013 or 1.3% of C. So that's not fast enough to have any appreciable amount of uh, effect, time effect, due to the speed of the object. That means that the vast majority, nearly 100% of the time dilation effect, would come because of the simulated gravity and not because you're moving at any appreciable speed relative to the speed of light. It's still really fast, but not nearly the speed of light. So the effect here of time dilation in this particular situation is virtually solely due to the gravitational effect and not due to the speed effect. And that is how we know. Why is that general versus special relativity? So the question is, how do you know what the cause of the time dilation, because the object is moving really fast. So what we do here is we calculate the simulated gravity effect that gives us an acceleration to the gravity effect of 1.5 times 10 to the 13 meters per second squared, which is huge compared to the acceleration to gravity on the Earth. So if we then take that and calculate how fast a clock is moving to cause that simulated gravity by using the centripetal acceleration equation and then solving for V, then we realize that the clock, even though it's moving really fast, is not moving nearly fast enough to have a time shift due to the speed that it's traveling on versus the time shift due to the acceleration due to the gravity. So it's the gravitational effect that, that reigns in this particular case, not the speed effect.